Hey everyone, welcome to day 65 of 90 on the 90 day video challenge, stepping into 2020 on the right foot. So, today was a long day. We've literally just got home. It's like 10 o'clock. What made it such a long day for you? Well, because I was stuck at work longer than I needed to be today. Yeah. And then you came straight home. Well, you drove didn't like come a home. drove like you a drove rocket to the to get bus barn. to the place to pick up the trailer to take over to the band room to take the kids instruments to the uh, Stillwater Chris Christmas Stillwater <laughs> Christmas Parade of Lights. So that's always a fun event. They get to decorate floats and stuff for uh, the Christmas season. And then the students in the band put like flashing Christmas lights on their uniforms while they march, and it's it's a fun event. It was a good parade tonight, so uh, I was really pretty excited. I was trying to look at my watch to see what the temperature is outside it's because like mine 60. is dead. I was going to say it is like it's warm. warm, but there's a cold front coming through. So, but usually we're freezing. Yeah, and so, I mean, it really was. It was fun, and then we went and had dinner afterwards, and so it was a good night, but it's just been a long night. You were at an ag booster meeting. Yeah. So. And then I met them for dinner. And now we're back at the house and we're trying to get everybody to do the things they need to do because Lauren and I leave at three in the morning to catch plane. And these kids just don't want to do what you ask them to do sometimes. They're lollygagging. So. Anyway, so last night we talked about double circle and it was interesting the the verse that he used Matthew 17 21 out of the King James Version I had read this late yesterday I didn't get a chance to read it in the morning uh, but then I when I looked it up it's interesting enough that verse 21 is left out of some manuscripts in the Bible now I can't tell you why that is I'm sure that the different committees that go together that put these translations together had a reason for doing so I find it interesting that it says that, you know, it follows in 1720, God's talking about, or Jesus talks about, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, you can tell this mountain to move from here to there. And then verse 21, which is omitted in some manuscripts, says that you can only do that by fasting and praying. Yeah, and on all of the ones that I saw where it was omitted, it it references that it goes coincides with Mark nine twenty nine, where it says Jesus replied, "This kind can be cast out only by prayer." Mm -hmm. So, so interesting tidbit about last night uh, and the day twenty seven. The day twenty eight today is quit praying. Hmm, why would we have to quit praying? The verse. Is Matthew twenty five twenty three well done, good and faithful servant. So, why would we have to quit praying? Well, this was something that really hit us whenever we were at Elevation over the summer. It is talking about quit praying. God's not going to do for you what you can do for you. And only He can do for you what you can't do for you. And that was something that really, I think, spoke to Jaden as we were there and we were sitting up in the balcony section and listening to that word because we had been specifically talking with her and praying with her on getting to college and God was the only one that could provide those funds for her and that Pastor Stephen stood right up there and talked about that. God is not going to do for you what you can do for you, but he will do for you what you can't do for you. And so that's what this day speaks to me. It's you know, there's things to pray about, and then there's things that while you're praying about it, the Holy Spirit's going to prompt you and say, you've already got that. Why are you asking me for it? 
Yeah, the story or the example that he used was when he was in a prayer group at Georgetown University, uh, and the campus ministry needed a computer, and they were sitting around praying for it, and Mark said the Holy Spirit just prompted him and said, you know, I don't know why you're praying about this. You are the one with the extra computer. And so Mark Batterson just stopped him in the middle of the prayer and said, look, I can take care of this. I've got a computer for you. So uh, that was his sort of eye-opening moment when it comes to this kind of thing. And it says, um, he also talks about Peter Marshall, the former chaplain of the United States Senate. He said, I wonder what would happen if we all agreed to read one of the Gospels until we came to a place that told us to do something, then went out to do it, and only after we had done it did we begin reading again. So, another interesting take on what it is that we often believe about our faith and our Christianity and the Gospel is, well, it says do this, but, you know, that was somebody else's responsibility or it's up to somebody else to do it. It's not up to me. You know, whatever the case may be, there's a hundred different things that come up and we're just like, nah, well, I don't I'm really want to by grace, not yeah. by works. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. once in a while, God says, hey, you can do that. So go do it. Yeah. Um, a lot of the times you can use an example of, you know, giving, especially this time of year, giving to a family that's less fortunate. We say, oh, well, you know, we'll pray for you that that you'll have what you need and all of that. Well, you know what? Write a check. Uh, go the extra mile. Go over and help. Pitch in. Whatever it may be. We don't have to just pray for somebody to be blessed. We can be the blessing. Yeah. And you can, you can ask different questions. You can say things like, I'm going to the grocery store. What can I pick up for you? Mm-hmm. You know, things that their brain doesn't think to say no to. It just thinks, oh, I need these things from the grocery store. There's ways that you're able to be a blessing, Mm -hmm. and in return, you're blessed. Uh, It says, when Christianity turns into a noun, it becomes a turnoff. Christianity was always intended to be a verb, more specifically, an action verb. Yep. What are some ways that people use it as a noun? Well, I think that they use it as a noun by by it being the place that they go to, by saying, I'm going to church, instead of I'm being the church. Mm -hmm. I think that we, we hear people that will say, I'll pray for you, which all they did is give words, like it says later on, or it says ideas or words, that... I'll pray for you is just stand there and pray for them. Let them hear you pray for them so that they're able to agree Mm -hmm. as two or more gathered and that they're encouraged because you're actually praying for them. Mm -hmm. Again, Mark gives uh, an example of, excuse me, someone that decided to stop praying and start acting. Uh, Talked about Becky pursued her God-ordained passion halfway around the world to a little village in India. Why? Because she couldn't just pray about the injustice she had witnessed. She had to do something about it. And it talks about her story, and her parents were like, oh, don't go, don't go, don't, you know, it's, it's too much. And she went anyway, and she followed God's passion and went over and, and did what she could do to try and rescue young girls and women who had been in sex trafficking. And so she, you know, in her mind may not have done much, but what she was able to do was to help connect them with their Savior. So she acted. She didn't just pray. It says, when everything is said and done, God won't say, well said, good and faithful servant. He won't say, well thought, well planned, or even well prayed. There is only one commendation he will give. Well done, good and faithful servant. And the thought for the day is, don't just pray about it. Do something about it. Yep. Those are challenging words. To actually do what it is that you say you believe. Yeah. 
And the Holy Spirit is going to move you in a unique way, maybe even unique from your spouse or your friends, that there is a um, there is a need that you're meant to fulfill in somebody's story, whether that is like we went and did a pattern cutting party whenever Rockford lost 100 pounds or so. We took his jeans and we had a pattern sent from Soul Hope, which is a mission that they actually use um, old denim and they make shoes for kids. And so we were able to do that. Then there is on Pastor Craig's leadership podcast, there is a girl probably, I want to say in August or September, that she had went through college and she was doing this. She was saying, you know, I, I want to impact the world. And she went over and found a group of women that she was able to help them to start producing sandals. And then she came back to America and sold the sandals out of her trunk and created local local jobs for the women in the village and was able to keep sending back money to keep creating more of an economy for them in their area. So there is something that the Holy Spirit will stir in you and you will you'll know because it's a burden. You'll say, I got to do something about that. And whenever that happens, that's where your feet hit the ground and you're either going to keep praying about it or you're going to do something about it. Yeah, exactly. Don't just pray about it. Do something about it. So. Tomorrow's what? Tomorrow, a new prayer. It's day 29, a new prayer. Mm -hmm. So tomorrow will look a little bit different for us. We'll have to try this uh, recording a Zoom meeting or something. We'll see how it goes. It'll be fun. You'll have plenty of time to read on the plane. I will, yeah. So. All right, everybody. Tomorrow, day 66, get your kicks on Route 66. We got Route 66 right here by us. Yeah. The Mother Road. Yeah. So, very cool. Tomorrow, day 66, you guys have a great night. We'll see you then.